Well, hello everybody, and um, sorry for today. Um, um, what happened for um, postponing and then uh, restarting? Anyhow, I'm gonna record it. So, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Yahya Ithawi, and uh, this is one episode of series of uh, uh, talk about. Um, uh, about uh, different uh, pediatric topics and today the talk is about um, uh, today the talk about use of um, uh, use of medications nebulizer um, in pediatric uh, so the objective will do some introduction and then I'll talk about the indications of use of nebulizers and then on the basic types and uh, what the factor affecting and how we use the enhancers. And we will mention some examples about specific nebulizers and we'll talk about uh, continuous versus intermittent and we'll mention some issues with home nebulization. So, um, the purpose of uh, using nebulizer is uh, uh, to uh, deliver or to administer aerosolized medications uh, to the uh, respiratory system. And it's a very important uh, delivery method for uh, some medications like corticosteroid, uh, corticosteroids, uh, bronchodilators, antibiotics, uh, mucus hydration agents. Um, sorry for that. Uh, mucus hydration agents, uh, mucolytic agents, and um, of course these medications uh, can be delivered whether at home or at hospital and the, uh, the setting of, of these uh, nebulizers are, are a little bit uh, um, different between home and the hospital. Uh, when we'll use the nebulizers, when we um, uh, when we will um, uh, when the patient is too ill or the patient is too young or some medications are available only in liquid form, like pentamidine or rivaverine or DNAs and some hypertonic saline and some topromycin. Uh, the potential disadvantage uh, of using nebulizers are, of course, they are costier than other way of administration. Uh, they are time consuming and they need a little bit of effort to set them up. Uh, it's hard to carry them uh, if you are uh, mobile. Uh, and they're different in their performance. They're different in their types, the performance of types, and they're different in same types with different manufacturers. And some of them, some of nebulizers like jet nebulizers need some compressed air, a gas, either compressed medical air or oxygen. Um, basically, there are three uh, types of nebulizers, the jet nebulizers, the ultrasonic nebulizers, and what we call it vibrating mesh, or uh, a membrane with aperture uh, nebulizer. The performance, as we said earlier, are different between these types and also varies with the same type by different manufacturers. The difference between the toys and the manufacturers have um, some uh, uh, clinical implications. So the uh, specific advantages and disadvantages of uh, the three types, we'll start with jet ventilator. Uh, first, the advantage of jet ventilator are they are least expensive. Second, we can use with them enhancer. 
uh, to improve their performance, reduce aerosol waste, and maybe improve the uh, delivery during inhalation and decrease the waste during exhalation. However, the one disadvantage is that jet ventilators need a compress gas source, whether it's oxygen or medical air. And there are many brands, many brands of, of jet ventilator like Vari brands. Um, also, um, some of the, uh, as we said, there, there are always enhancers. Uh, so some of the uh, jet ventilators are enhanced with a storage bag, like circular. Also, we can use a scavenger or removals when we use uh, toxic medication, like uh, Raspigar 2, with, uh, 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 we use it with uh, uh, delivery of uh, 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 specific medication. Also, SPAG, uh, we use it with uh, 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 Ribavirin. The second type is ultrasonic. Now, this by far the least one is used. Uh, but the advantage is um, the ultrasonic, because it uses ultrasonic waves that uh, generated by piezoelectric source, so therefore you don't need uh, uh, gas source to make them function. And also they can nebulize very large volume of liquid and they take shorter time. The uh, disadvantage is uh, they cannot break down the particles effectively, that's why it will be larger aerosolized particles. And uh, because they are large, they cannot be deposited in the uh, alveoli. So these particles may deposit in the airways and causes um, some bronchospasm and um, increase the airway resistance. And therefore, because they are deposited in the airways rather than the uh, terminal uh, I mean large airways rather than terminal airways and alveoli because they're big size, they um, uh, have less efficacy. And there are many brands like Beetle Nebulizer and um, Compact Ultrasonic Nebulizer, Mini Breeze Ultrasonic Nebulizer, Sonic Mist Ultrasonic Nebulizer. The last one is what we call it vibrating mesh. It's a mesh that has an aperture. Uh, it's like the ultrasonic, it does not need, um, um, uh, it does not need the uh, vibrating mesh nebulizer, does not need gas source. And therefore, uh, and, and, and they, they also the other things that's better than ultrasonic nebula, uh, jet nebulizer, it has a short uh, time than jet nebulizer. And because all the particles pass within this aperture, within this opening from the container through the mesh, the particles are very uniform. They are always same size. And because we can control the size of the opening, then we can control the size of the particles. And therefore we can make these particles um, very small. Uh, and it's more efficient than jet nebulizer for a reason that we will discuss later. The disadvantage, however, uh, is very expensive. And also we always require um, an efficient person, experienced person to assemble it and disassemble it. An example of uh, vibrating mesh nebulizer is E-Flow, Altira, Trio, uh, Eronep, and micro air and others. So we'll start with first one, which is the uh, jet nebulizer. Jet nebulizer work that there is a gas source, either air, medical air or oxygen. Uh, and then uh, compressed or jet through uh, away. 
and by compressing through the way, it creates negative bracket. How that? It uses uh, Venturi principles. So imagine if you're holding a paper and you are on the highway and a truck passed by. The pressure around the moving truck will create negative pressure that suck this paper. Imagine now there is a water, either you're holding or it's a bond around the street. This water will be aerosolized and follow the truck. So that's why by injecting the gas, way it creates negative pressure and that's why it pulls the large aerosolized particles from the fluid and make it a droplet. Then these particles hit baffles. Baffles are fences or, or um, an obstruction that during the moving of large particles, they hit the baffles and they decrease in their size. So they become smaller and then they become uh, pierable and they can reach to a size of one to five micrometer in size. These small particles, after they hit the puffles, then deliver to the uh, patient through an interface. It might be mouthpiece in very small babies, and it may be face mask. Most of the medications that we use uh, through nebulization are delivered by jet nebulizer. And this is an example of jet nebulizer. You can see the gas source from here and the gas move in a compressed way or path. And this create negative pressure in here. And there is a, a liquid and this neg negative pressure pull uh, the uh, liquid and make it large uh, particles in the air. Then these particles hit the baffles and make it smaller and then goes to the baby or to the patient through an interface. However, there is other side which is open and it's caused some uh, medication wasted, especially during exhalation. The other problem is that the fluid inside the nebulizer, which means that you will have a dead space, which means that you will have a limit uh, of the fluid amount that you can install here. So these are one of the disadvantages is the dead space and the limit of the volume. The second is the wastage. Uh, the ultrasonic nebulizer is a totally different. It composed of power unit. This power unit is exactly the same of the power unit of your computer. It's like a box. And this power unit sometimes has a fan. The fan help to deliver the uh, medication to the patient. And this power causes an electrical energy um, converted to a high frequency by piece of electric element. So you have a power unit giving us electrical energy uh, charging the piezoelectric and the piezoelectric cause a high frequency waves um, at around 1.6 megahertz. The ultrasonic wave transmitted to the service of a solution and when it hit the service of the solution it caused the erosals. Again there is a fan that may be used so the nebulizer, the ultrasonic with or without fan, and fan help to deliver the medications to the patient. Um, but sometimes there is no fan and therefore the delivery depend on inhalation or sucking force created by the patient. The ultrasonic nebulizers are of two types, the small volume ultrasonic nebulizers um, it's commercially available to deliver bronchodilators and large volume ultrasonic and usually used to create sputum uh, either as a physiotherapy 
or as um, for for purpose of diagnostic for diagnostic purposes. Uh, this is the ultrasonic nebulizer. You can see that there is a and in here there is a power uh, unit hit the piezoelectric uh, crystals. Crystal create ultrasound and then hit the surface of the nebulizer, then make like a fontaine and then causes the nebulization and then goes to the patient. The other type is, so we talked about jet nebulizers, ultrasonic nebulizers. Now we're talking about vibrating mesh nebulizer, which means that there is a, a membrane that has opening. This membrane starts to move, vibrate. That's the whole principle. The size of the mesh the openings in the mesh to apertures determine the size of the particle. Uh, and this is this electronic nebulizer, because the size determined by the opening, not by the vibration, whether it's a jet or it's a, a ultrasonic, the size of the particle are very uniform. All the size are the same because all of them, they have to pass through this opening. And the size can be determined by the sizes of this opening. So they are look more precise with about 3.6 micrometer plus minus 0.1. They're very pretty size, the uh, mass median diameter. And also it has a very short time. And the reason for this short time, because the fluid that we will nebulize is outside the nebulizer. So there is no dead space. And all this fluid has to pass through this opening. So there is no wastage. And therefore the delivery time is very short. And these are examples of vibrating mesh nebulizer like Aeronep or MicroAir. Here is the one. You can see that there is a membrane and this membrane has opening. And the size of this opening, these small holes, determine the size of the fluid particles that will pass. And you can see the fluid is outside the, it's above the membrane, it's outside the nebulizer. Or, or by fluid, I mean the drug or a combination of a fluid and a drug. And when this vibrate, uh, through electric energy, it creates the uh, aerosol. And you can see this is magnification of the membrane and you can see the opening that uh, allow very fixed uh, size of droplets. What are the factor affect nebulizers? How these nebulizers perform? And because the jet nebulizer is the most commonly used nebulizer, I will be concentrating on this. The reason of its use because it's very, um, uh, very, uh, 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 I won't say cheap, but I say uh, have very low cost. And also has any other uh, characteristics that, uh, um, give us many advantages to, for them to be commonly used. And it's considered a very effective nebulizer because it can deliver more than 50% of the total dose of a medication uh, to, as a, uh, to, to be a respirable aerosol within 10 minutes. Remember when the jet and ventilator, because it's inside, the fluid is inside the fluid by fluid, I mean the fluid and drug or a combination is inside the nebulizer. So it won't all go to the patient. So if you deliver more than 50%, that is more than enough. And it can deliver this 50% or more than that within less than 10 minutes. What are the factors affecting the jet nebulizers? Some of the factors relating to the device itself like the mechanism of creation, of creating the uh, uh, aerosols. And who is manufacturing them? 
what are the flow of the gas we use? How much volume they can contain and how much volume we put inside volume of fluid or our medication? What are the solution characteristic of that fluid inside? Uh, what are the characteristic of the gas that we use, whether it's a medical, medical air or oxygen? Do we add, now one of the advantage of a jet ventilator, we can add other pieces to the ventilator to enhance it. So uh, uh, what are these enhancers and how they are designed? What, uh, also it been affected whether this nebulizer is a continuous or intermittent uh, delivery. On the other hand, there is patient's factors that affect uh, delivery of medications. How the patient is breathing? Is he breathing continuous? Is he periodic? Is it labor? Is he breathing from his nose or his mouth? Is he being ventilated or not ventilated? Is there an airway problem or not? Whether using positive pressure or not? All these factors can affect the delivery of uh, medication using just uh, nebulizer. Uh, because of the dead space and because of different size particles and because wastage of medication during exhalation, the jet nebulizer are not efficient. Because air, there is wastage during Uh, during exhalation, and also there is a good amount of the big size droplet that created by the jet Uh, that is created by the jet and then when hit the baffles to make them smaller they got interrupted they got trapped they got clogged and you might lose them and the other reason conventional jet nebulizer has a constant flow rate so you cannot increase and decrease the rate it's not like a sipa not like a ventilator, that you can increase or decrease the flow during inspiration and expiration. So it's a constant. And therefore, because of this constant flow, you have more wastage during expiration. And therefore, we need to, know, we need to use enhancers. And these enhancers um, tackle specific uh, delivery issues with the jet ventilator, uh, with the jet nebulizer, so. So therefore, uh, because the nebulization, uh, jet nebulizer are very common, and because there are many factors, I selected a few factors that we will discuss uh, that I thought is very important, which is the time, the design, the gas, the dead volume, the characteristic of solutions, and some other factors. Now, majority of nebulization dose delivered within the first five minutes. And there is no benefit of continuing more than 10 minutes. When the uh, nebulizer start to sputter or spitting, or uh, there is a dropping out from, then the nebulizer is not effective. You might tab it a few times, but after that is not active. So it's very important to not go beyond 10 minutes and also stop when the, uh, the nebulizer starts sputtering because you're wasting the time and there is no effect and you may see your patient deteriorating. The chamber design, the design of the jet ventilator decrease and increase its efficiency in aerosolization of the medication. And it, the, the best design is designed that decrease the dead space and increase uh, 
erosal generation. And therefore, the total length, uh, the total length deposition of starting indication ranging between 2 to 20% in very effective nebulizer. And when we said 20, 10 to 20% um, is, um, uh, means that the percentage of medication that delivered to the patient from the starting dose or the dose that inside the nebulizer. Also the efficiency of jet ventilator, the design are uh, different with different patient age. The mean total lung deposition of albiterol, for example, using breath enhanced open vent assisted vent uh, nebulizer expressed as a percentage of starting dose is about 5% in less than four years and 11% in uh, uh, more than four years. And these are without uh, just using breath enhanced uh, not other enhancers. The other factor that affect the jet nebulizer is the driving gas, the driving uh, gas flow. So the flow rate of eight liter per minute pro pro provide probably all optimal size of what we call it a mat, which is mass median aerodynamic diameter. When, so eight liter, when we use conventional small volume nebulizer. This flow affect the erosal particles affected by erosal volume and nebulization time. So the flow can affect the size of the uh, particles. It can affect the volume that will be delivered to the patient and over how long. And therefore, decreasing the flow rate, for example, by two liters, decrease output of respi uh, respirable particles by about 30%. So it's very important to keep the flow at eight. However, it's very important that, uh, remember that most of the home jet nebulizer uh, has a compressor to generate the flow or the gas, the compressed gas. Uh, they cannot deliver a high rate to uh, deliver proper MMAT or uh, median mass aerodynamic diameter. And because of that, they got high size or large size particles. And remember, large size particles can cause bronchospasm and increase airway resistance. And therefore, breath enhanced nebulizer function efficiently at less pressure. And therefore, using straight or conventional or plain jet nebulizer is not a good practice for home nebulizers. We need to add breath enhancer because when we add the breath enhancer, we need less uh, flow to generate same size particles. Instead of eight, we go down to three to five. It's very important when you use the jet ventilator, especially at home, to match the recommended nebulizer specification with the uh, medical uh, with the with with the uh, medication being delivered the nebulizer specification the amount of the flow and the time in hospital setting if you guys remember uh, when we talked about invasive and non-invasive ventilation we talked about parameters and we said that parameters are two types the set and the measure so when you set the flow, 
that does not mean, like let's say you set it at eight liter per minute, that does not mean that the patient will get eight because that's what you set. What the patient get might be less. Always remember that what you said is different from get, and therefore the flow rate might decrease by two liter due to inadequate back pressure compensation. Remember the pressure are created by two types or two ways or two methods. Either there is positive pressure with a valve or an obstruction. It's like uh, filling a uh, flow uh, in a room with time, the pressure will get higher. The other method is Venturi method. It's a suction pressure. So you suck and around it, there will be movement and pressure. Um, once the flow is decreased, the size of MMAD will get bigger. And because it's a big size, it gets less pulmonary deposition. In addition to that, it causes some bronchospasm and, and increased airway resistance. So if you don't have enhancer, it's much better to use inhaler, matter dose inhaler, with some spacers that's suitable for, a, just a, for, a, for, a, for the child age. These inhalers are very effective and they might be better in delivering specially inhaled cortico, uh, glucocorticoids and also uh, beta agonists or albuterols. And they are very uh, mobile and uh, they can be uh, very effective. And with these spacers that's currently available through a spacer with um, teeth or spacer with mouthpiece, they can be very effective in using uh, glucocorticoid inhale, inhalation or, or uh, administer to respiratory system even in emergency uh, setting. The other important in addition to the flow of the gas is density of the gas. It affect the uh, nebulizer performance. The, for example, if you are ventilating, and you want to use uh, Heliox, which is a combination of helium and oxygen in a patient with asthmatic, or at the same time you want to give um, inhaler and uh, uh, nebulized medications, uh, bronchodilators, remember the inhaled mass of oil is significantly dropped with use of Helox or Heliox. Sorry. And therefore you need to increase the flow to deliver the same uh, dose to the patient. It, you might need even to double the flow if you're using Heliox during nebulization. However, if you use a proper flow, Heliox might improve erosal delivery to the uh, lower airway. Decrease the density of the gas. It acts exactly the same that decreasing the density of the medication. It creates smaller particles, and that means it can go further to the lower airways. However, decreasing the density of gas is theoretically acceptable. It has no uh, clinical evidence. The other, um, as we, uh, as you guys remember, that the volume in the jet nebulizer or the, the medication is inside the nebulizer. It's not like the uh, uh, jet mesh nebulizer. It's inside, therefore there is a dead space. And how we calculate the dead volume is how much residual medication solution remaining inside nebulizer or the reservoir of the nebulizer after you finish the therapy. And these residuals are unable to be nebulized. And the amount vary with different models of nebulizer or jet nebulizer. The once you increase the volume of the medication, you get better nebulization. 
and therefore that's the idea of adding normal saline to the medication. However, it's up to a point. Because if you exceed that, the, the nebulizer will not able to nebulize. And when it becomes so big amount, you increase the wastage. So you need to uh, balance the volume of the dead space between not being able to nebulize because they're very small and not being able to nebulize because it's very high or you're wasting more because it's a big size. And therefore the wasting of drug from the jet nebulizer decreases by adjusting the starting volume. Most of these nebulizer need only formal. And usually the formal can be delivered within 10 minutes using rate of eight liter or until 10 minutes or until the nebulizer starts sputtering or spitting. Tapping a nebulizer is uh, something that you can do to increase the effectiveness of nebulization at the end, toward the end of 10 minutes, when the dead space gets smaller and smaller. However, uh, two or three times is more than enough and don't continue that because you're wasting the time and it might increase the uh, side effect on the patient. Other factors, very important, patient cooperation. Also breathing patterns. Patients who have consistent cough have much waste time because there will be interruption. Uh, what are the face masks are uh, using uh, nasal, like um, um, partial rebreathing, uh, rebreathing, or non rebreathing? Are uh, using Venturi? Remember, we've talked about these type of masks during um, when we talked about oxygen delivery systems. There is filters on these uh, medical compressors to generate the gas, especially at home, to make the compressed air to a medical air, because remember there is a difference between medical air, filter, clean air, and air. Uh, and these filters should be changed, it's like the filters of fridge or other compressors. If you fail, you get less performance, you get different particle size, and you might get uh, contamination or infection. The good news about jet nebulizer is that you can enhance it. Enhance it, it means adding tools to the device to have better performance, uh, increases this, uh, decreases the size of the particles and decreases the waste during exhalation. These are types of jet nebulizers. You can see that there is timers in this one. We call it Euroclips. You can see that there is a, a storage reservoir in this type. We call it circular. And you can see that there is a ventilation enhancer in this type. Um, and you can combine, the, of course, any of these. Open jet nebulizer means that one side open to the patient and the other side open to the outside. Putting a reservoir on the other side will allow continuous entrainment of the, uh, or, uh, of, of, or containment or uh, enclosure of the medications within the nebulizer. And therefore, and also the other reservoir will contain the air, not only the medication, and therefore it's increased the flow uh, during nebulization inside nebulizer chamber. And because of that, the flow is increased and you get smaller particle size and you get shorter nebulization time. And you get better aerosol, uh, aerosols during inspiration. Remember, you, if you increase the flow, you get more waste if you are not using a reservoir, but increasing the flow uh, to a degree uh, might be a good idea, not exceeding eight liters per minute, but using uh, uh, 
um, storage bag on the other side of the opening uh, of the open uh, end of the chamber or of the nebulizer um, uh, might limit the uh, might might you might be able to decrease the flow. Drug wastage in open vent jet nebulizer can uh, overcome, as we said, by what we call it breath enhanced system, which means that gas will be entrained only during inspiration. So using breath enhancement might improve the delivery by up to 50%. And here an example of the enhancement, you can see there is expiration valve in here and the valve is open during inspiration. Closed during expiration, open during inspiration. And therefore decreasing the waste during the uh, expiration. You can see the safety valve for uh, in high pressure increment. This open and closed depend on the situation. And you can see most of the medications goes to the patient. Closed, no medication is going. During expiration, more medication, more drops are going to the patient. But the other principles are the same. The air compressed, the baffles, the dead space on the floor. Advantage of breath enhanced open vent lane nebulizer. You know, as we said, smaller particle more particles going to the patient, so they were shortening the time, less wastage, and therefore more drug going to the patient. And because you are closing, you may need to use less flow. And when you're using less flow, then you can use it at home, because most of the compressor can generate limited flow at home. However, the disadvantage are that then on the patient in respiratory flow rate. So if the patient cannot breathe in, then he won't get much of medication. And also there is the uh, tidal volume uh, that going to the patient. And because you are adding to it a valve, a very expensive, then become more expensive than conventional nebulizers. The other problem about the vent enhanced uh, ventilator is not checked in young children. But it's definitely more efficient than conventional. Um, however, more, many people are using it in young children despite no evidence. We talked about storage bag. So on one end, there is one-way valve to the patient. On the other end, there is a storage valve. So during exhalation, uh, the patient breathes out. And during inspiration, and uh, at the same time when the patient breathing out, the medication goes to that bag. And when breathing in, the medication comes from the jet and from the storage bag. So all the aerosols collected during expiration goes back to the patient. And therefore, the main principle of using storage bag is decreasing the waste. The other method is to improve nebulization is using intermittent nebulizer. There is a knob that the patient can press during inspiration to open the nebulization. And when he exhales, he removes his hand, or she removes her hand. And by this, you are uh, decreasing the nebulization during uh, expiration, and therefore decreasing the waste. However, this needs an older child to do a good hand-breath uh, coordination. And because the patient is not breathing or not nebulizing during expiration, then the time will get longer. So 10 minutes nebulization might get 30 minutes or, or even longer. And it's very tough to use it in young children. You can use it by adult, adult coordinator, but it's very hard. 
uh, instead of intermittent nebulization or intermittent vent nebulizer, there is something called the breath actuated nebulizer, where there is an actuator in here that sends the breathing and open the nebulizer during in inspiration and close it during expiration. So it's kind of automatic uh, intermittent nebulization. And because of that, it's capable of delivering higher drug doses, longer nebulization time. And as I say, the activation of breath actuated diaphragm at inspiratory flow rate as, as low as 15. And you can see that to use the breath actuator, you need a higher flow rate. And that's one of the disadvantage of breath actuated nebulizer. A breath actuated nebulizer is very effective in delivering single dose of al albuterol. An example of that uh, breath actuator is the Iraq Eclipse. And actually this nebulizer uh, is as effective as inhaler. It can provide one single dose of albuterol, but also it can help to give one hour of continuous nebulization. And because it's automatic timing with the breathing, it can be used in young children as low as six months. You might need to press the knobs a few times. Let's go back on it. Sorry, I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. My computer is not moving. The um, the drug wastage of open vent jet nebulizer can be also partially, um, as we said, um, by using an, an enhancers. And um, um, so um, using the reservoir and using a ventilation uh, enhancer, uh, which is um, 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 uh, which is um, a kind of ventilation uh, valve that closes during expiration and open during inspiration. And therefore there is no wastage of the gas uh, during expiration and um, during inspiration, air comes from outside in addition to the compressed gas and therefore more particles goes to the patient. And also there is always safety valve in case of extra uh, uh, pressure inside. Again, same, there is feeding, there is baffles, and there is um, uh, dead space containing fluid. The, um, the breath enhanced open ventilator advantage is um, getting smaller particles because uh, there is no wastage and no more um, uh, uh, particles goes outside because the valve is closed. The second is uh, um, more uh, uh, pressure is inside and therefore the flow can cause more uh, um, pr negative pressure, create more particles and hit the uh, baffles faster and creating um, a faster nebulization rate and smaller particle size. And by decreasing the wastage because it's uh, closes during expiration, it increases the delivery to the patient and less wastage. And because it's a closed system, it needs less, less flow. The advantage of open vent jet nebulizer are they are dependent on patient inspiratory flow during inspiration, and also depend on the tidal volume for optimal function. And of course, because there is, uh, we're adding tool to it, then they are more expensive than um, the uh, more expensive than the conventional uh, nebulizer. The uh, breath enhanced open uh, vent uh, nebulizer is not fully uh, evaluated in infant and young children. 
However, they are more efficient than conventional, and they are generally used in the management of these young uh, children, despite the, this not being fully evaluated. The storage bag that we discussed is um, a bag that connected to the other side to prevent wastage, uh, uh, get less pressure, uh, uh, increase the time, uh, decrease over the size of the um, of the uh, 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 respiral particles. Um, intermittent uh, nebulizer. The intermittent nebulizer is um, a kind of old method to control where the patient use um, his or her thumb to open the flow during expiration and close it during inspiration. And therefore it need very good hand breath uh, coordination and uh, and therefore it's not good for young children. However, it uh, increased nebulization time, it decreased the uh, wastage, uh, improved delivery to the patient. Um, uh, and, and because there is no nebulization during exhalation, then the time of nebulization gets longer instead of less than 10 minutes and can go up to 30 minutes. Um, and however, it also can be used in young children if the um, um, an adult uh, control the uh, uh, the bottom that make the nebulizer uh, give the flow of nebulization during inspiration, but also it's uh, uh, difficult. And this is um, there is another way to do it is by using breath actuating. Uh, it's, uh, it's intermittent nebulization. In it, in, it, in, in um, Instead that of the patient controlling the uh, button to uh, cause a breath in during in inspiration and nebulization, and there is the um, there is an automatic actuator that sends the flow and uh, uh, open the nebulization during inspiration and close it during expiration. However, the uh, breath actuator needs a higher flow uh, to make the diaphragm or the actuated diaphragm. Uh, uh, open the flow uh, during inspiration. The breath actuated nebulizer are very effective as a single dose uh, uh, um, um, bronchodilator during um, asthma exacerbation. An example of that Eroclips and also can be used as a continuous nebulizer for about one hour. And because the uh, um, control of uh, on and off bottom is through an actuator. Therefore, it can be used for young children down to six months. However, at the beginning, you might need to do some manual activation of this actuator of these breaths uh, until the uh, 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 until the uh, proper uh, functioning of the actuator continues. Nebulization of specific conditions. Um, a specific condition use a specific nebulizer because of toxicity of some medications that can cause to the uh, to the environment. An example of that uh, 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 respirator uh, GAR2, which is used for uh, aerosolized uh, pentamidine, uh, a medication used for pneumocystic carine or gerovisi. And by using a specific type, it has a one-way valve and a filter to prevent the contamination of medication to the environment. Um, again, this is the dose of the um, uh, uh, use for pentamidine in pneumocystic gerovisi, uh, but I'm not going to discuss it. Um, you can pause the video and see the doses, and also you can uh, read it from the uh, PDF copy of the presentation that. Uh, I supply everybody. Uh, the other type is small particles uh, erosal uh, generator or SPAD, small particle uh, erosal generator and used for revivory. Again, it's a very effective in creating uh, uh, a mat of uh, revivory down to 1.3 microns. And SPAD has scavenger or cleaner to prevent contamination of the medication with the environment. 
It's used mainly for RSV. It's not being used for routine. It's only used in a specific indication after fully confirming the diagnosis. And here is the doses. And again, I'm not going to discuss it. You can pause the video or look to the doses from the PDF format that I supplied everybody. Other type of specific nebulizer is used for DNAs, also topromycin and estriana. There are um, other uh, uh, specific nebulizer like nebulizer used for aerosolizing the surfactant, but because it's only in research level, not in a clinical practice, um, I didn't mention it here. The continuous uh, nebulization is uh, best used for uh, 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 bronchodilators nebulization in, in severe asthma. Um, these are the doses for continuous nebulization for albuterol in children and adult. Not going to discuss it, it's here. The other one is for levalbuterol, which is uh, a substance that derived from albuterol, only the R albuterol, the um, the S albuterol is, is not in, in, in the thinking at the beginning was then this can be less dose um, with better effect and um, uh, less side effect from albuterol, but the clinical trial show, showed no difference. The other is uh, betaltyrol, which is not commonly used. Also, apratromiopromide can be used for continuous with or without the um, uh, bronchodilators uh, uh, like uh, beta agonist. I'm not going to discuss it, but the doses are here for neonate and for pediatrics and adolescent. The uh, continuous nebulization are, are, are effective in delivering high dose um, of bronchodilators up to 20 uh, milligram each hour. And it, continuous nebulization is as effective as intermittent nebulization. However, the, um, the need for personnel is less. Although no evidence, no control, uh, comparison between continuous and intermittent nebulization. But it decreased the uh, personal or health provider number decreases with use of continuous nebulization as it does not need much of supervision like the intermittent one. It requires special delivery system to avoid the need of refilling as the refilling need to be done every 10 to 15 minutes in intermittent ones. So there are several strategies. There are small volume strategies where uh, there is an interface and there is nebulizer connect to the uh, gas source and, uh, and, and, and giving set connecting to the infusion bath that contain the medication for continuous delivery. Other strategies more complicated is composed also of, of, of a giving set of the solution connected to the pump and from the pump to an adapter to the nebulizer and nebulizer connect to the a breathing circuit. Uh, there are um, a large volume nebulizer, big size, called heart nebulizer, that can about 30 mL per hour of aerosols. And um, it also can be used as a continuous nebulization for even non-ventilated patient. And remember, um, when using nebulization in a ventilated patient with heliox, you need to increase the uh, flow rate at least 11. The optimal would be uh, 15 liters per minute. You need to instruct the patient during nebulization to avoid spillage so the patient uh, need to be upright, sitting position, not supine. You need to give the patient instruction about how to assemble and disassemble the apparatus, how to add medication, how to increase the dead volume and to, uh, to make it somewhere between about 4 mil to for optimum uh, delivery. 
you need uh, to um, enforce to the patient that for the nebulizer to work or a jet nebulizer to work, you need either compressor or you need um, a, a driven gauge, whether it's air or oxygen, at a flow of six point, uh, from six to eight liter per minute. Patient should be encouraged to breathe in while uh, using the nebulizer and take some deep ones uh, every now and then. When the nebulizer starts uh, uh, sputtering, you need to be tapped. But if you continue sputtering despite the top, uh, the uh, nebulization session should end. Again, use of nebulizer at home need a compressor. These compressors need various flow rate um, with different manufacturer. Also combination of different nebulizers with different compressor make difference in the efficiency of delivery. Some generator generate two flow rate, which will affect the delivery of the um, uh, uh, respirable uh, uh, particles. Um, so the best and the easiest way and take home message only prescribe those nebulizer with compressor that can deliver at least 50% of the uh, initial uh, medicine in less than 10 minutes. You need to give some uh, instruction to control infection about using of disposal and long-term uh, advice to avoid contamination with bacteria. Need to give a standard guideline to disinfect the home nebulizer, cleaning it by rinsing it with air dried, and rinsing it and then put in an air, uh, air dryness to prevent clogging of venturi and valves and then reduce microbial contamination. Soaking it one or two times per week with acetic acid that uh, uh, can be uh, made from one part of uh, white vinegar to three parts of water. Uh, there is commercial chemicals for use of clean for 10 minutes. However, chemicals may not provide uh, adequate sterilization. Always is a good practice to be finally suck it with tub water. And of course, all the disposable and the compressors uh, filters need to be replaced Q six months. Otherwise, the efficiency of these nebulizer decreases. Allergy need to be avoided like cockroach, cat, dog, mouse particles. So proper cleaning and storage in plastic enclosure uh, seal to prevent this, uh, the contamination of these allergies. Nebulizers as anything else deteriorate with time. However, with proper use and cleaning, the deterioration might be uh, deferred uh, too long of time. The replacement of the parts dependent, dependent on man, manufacturers' uh, recommendations. Tubing also need to replace exactly like other disposals and parts of the nebulizer. And thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoy the video and we'll see you next time.